Welcome to day five of 100 Days of Code. We are getting there slowly. In the previous videos, you've learned all about variables, inputs, and outputs with print. Now today, we're gonna get the computer to do something for us and actually make a decision. We're gonna learn about if statements. And this is the foundation to how all modern software is designed. So an if statement is a bit like asking a question to the computer. We're going to say to it, if something is true, then we're going to do one part or one aspect of the code. And this works very, very simply. We're going to start by asking a question and storing it in a variable just as we have done previously. With that out of the way, we can start asking a question. And in this case, I'm going to check to see if the name that the user entered is my name. So this first line is the question. We've got the command word if, and then we've got the condition. Now the condition can be thought of as the actual thing we're asking the computer. And we've got a comparison here. How do we know it's a comparison? Well, it's that magic double equals in the middle. That is the equivalent of asking a question like, are these two things the same? And the computer will look at these two things, in this case, the variable my name, and the text, David, and if they match up, then it's going to run the line of code or the lines of code directly underneath it. Now you'll notice here that Replit's tried to help me by indenting the line of code that I'm trying to write on. And let's start simple, let's print out something cool. The if statement will do all of the lines of code that are indented at least once that sit immediately underneath it. If we run this program, you'll see exactly what happens. If I run it and I say my name is David, which it is, what well, is gonna say welcome to me? If I run it again and pretend my name is Pamela, well, it doesn't care about me, so it's ignored that. There is one slight problem with this, and it's that pickiness again that we've seen before. If it asks me what my name is and I'm too lazy to put capitals in, then it doesn't care about me either. So. Whilst if statements are great, they work on a very, very exact basis. We are literally talking about matching up even the capitalization. So keep that in mind as you go forward. We can, of course, add more lines of code than that if we'd like. Notice that everything I'm typing is indented after the if statement at least once. That means it's all part of the code that we run. And now if we run the code and I say my name is David, it'll execute both the lines. Now at this point, you might be thinking, well, that's great for you, David, but what about everybody else? My name's not David. Most people in the world, believe it or not, are not named David, and, and that's fair. So an if statement has a matching statement called an else. Now an else doesn't have a condition. It is literally just the word else, but key to making it work is that it must be the first thing, unindented after the if statement, and in line with it. That sounds complicated, but let's see it actually work. I'm gonna backspace so that my cursor is in line with that if above it, and it's the first thing that's coming back in after the if statement, and I'm simply gonna type else colon. Once again, when I press enter, Replit's gonna help me and indent my code a little bit, and here I'm gonna write the code that's gonna happen if somebody that's not called David turns up. And once again, we could write as many lines of code as we wanted to there. But let's run that and see how that works. So I'll say my name's David, and I get the same response as before. Notice I didn't get that line, who on earth are you? Because if and else are selective, if the condition is matched, then it will do the first part of the code, and it will ignore the second part. Let's try something else. Now it's just saying the second part because the condition didn't match, so the computer immediately jumped to the else and ran that code. And once again, you can have multiple lines of code here if you'd like. Your job now, go and implement something broadly similar. See if you can get it to pick up your name and give you a nice welcome message, whilst being a bit mean and grumpy to anybody else that tries to use your computer. Take five minutes and build something cool. Pause, pause me, click pause. Are you back now? You're back. Cool. Well, let's have a look what could go wrong. 
because there's a bunch of stuff that can go wrong. So here's a very simple program that's going to ask if you're a cat or a dog person and give you an appropriate response based on what you've picked. But there's a problem with it. Let's run it and see if we can work out what that error is. Oh, it's our old friend invalid syntax. So that usually means we've typed something wrong. But what did we type wrong this time? Have a look and see if you can spot the obvious mistake. Did you notice that we only used one equals in the if? There is a big difference between a single equals and a double equals in programming. A single equals changes something. So it changes one thing to another and a double equals is just a very simple question. Are these two things the same? We need to make sure that we remember that in an if statements condition, we use the double equals. By changing that, the program should work and shocking no one, I'm a cat person. Ta-da. Another problem you might encounter is on the screen at the moment. Let's run it and see if we can track down that issue. It's our invalid syntax problem again, but can you see exactly where the code is pointing to? Our error message is telling us there's an error just after the word cats. So what are we missing? Did you spot it? We're missing the colon. It's one of the most common mistakes I see in students. Missing that colon means you've not said to the computer, well, this is true, then do this. The colon is the then do this part. Without that, you're just saying, if this happens, cool. And of course, the computer, when trying to run the code, goes, ah, what do you want me to do? I don't know. So that colon is really, really important in that setting. Our last error. Let's run it and see what's going on. Oh, this is a different error for a change. Indentation error. Well, what does that mean? Have a look. The indentation in Python is part of the syntax. It is how we explain what we want to happen. After an if statement or an else, as soon as we see a colon, the next line should be indented further than one before it. This tells the computer that everything indented is what should happen in that exact condition. In our case, we've forgotten to indent that last line and therefore things are not going to work. If we fix that by clicking there and pressing the tab key, when we click run, the program runs perfectly. If you're looking for more of a challenge, once again, I've broken some code. Take a look. Okay, challenge time. This one's going to revolve a little bit of thinking from you because you're going to build a which character are you game. Now, I'm sure we've all played these ourselves, going through and picking out our characteristics and being told that we happen to be Ron Weasley. Well, you're going to build that exact same thing with a series of if statements that ask a bunch of questions, finishing off with one final if statement with an else that picks a character if you've not said yes to anything previously. You get to pick the fictional universe of your choice, be it a game, a TV show, a book series, or a series of movies, and identify your friends and your family as a character within that work. This should be a bit of fun, especially for you to poke a bit of fun at some of your family. Let's see what you build, and please put that hashtag on there, replit 100 days of code, when you share it in the community or on social media. Encourage people to post and tell you which of those characters you ended up being. Tomorrow, we're going to be looking at an elif, which is an extension to this if and else stuff, and make it so that you can ask follow-up questions, so you can really dig into what that user wants. Thank you.